You guys ready? Okay, let's get going. Uh, Adam was just talking about how the players have come together after a lot of guys are new joining the team free agency. How do you how do you feel like this group has sort of come together to be ready for week one? I think they, they've, they've done a good job. I mean, I think they're they're comfortable with each other. Uh, they're comfortable with what we're doing in the scheme. Uh, but the true test will be at uh, 1 o'clock next Sunday when we kick it off. So that's when we'll find out for real. Thank you. At any other point of your career, have you had this much roster turnover on the defensive side at any other point more than this year? Uh, I really, honestly, Courtney, I haven't thought about it that way. So... Um, I really I can't answer that question off the top of my head because I haven't thought about you know places that I've been. I would imagine in Dallas uh, in 2001 it was like this because after the 2000 season we had a lot of guys on defense retire. You know Leon Lett, Chad Hennings, uh, George Teague. You know we lost a lot of players and we became really young. You know that 2001 season so. Uh, I would think that that would be very close to what we've had here. Yeah, Andrew, you talked about the process with Everson Griffin, just kind of getting a feel for where he's at still. I guess, how's that going? What, what sense have you got? Well, it's going good. You know, he, uh, like I told you guys last week, you know, he has great recall uh, to what we do technique-wise, drill-wise, but I think more importantly, you know, he remembers all the calls. So it's not like bringing in another guy that you're trying to teach everything from new. You know, so for him, it was just him learning the new things, the new wrinkles that we put in. Uh, so I think that helps him. Um, and then obviously in the game, in the four plays he was in, he was very productive, you know, in the four plays that he was out there. So uh, um, so I feel comfortable where he is right now, and uh, we just got to keep building. Do you get the sense that physically he's back up to where he needs to be, or is it going to be take some time? To... Yeah, it's going to always, it's like everybody. You know, like I told you guys, you know, playing D-line is not easy. You know, you got to, you got to get back in the groove. And honestly, the hardest thing to come back to you is the pass rush part of it because it's it's got a lot of timing mechanism to it. You know, the run game comes back quicker because it's, you know, taking proper steps, putting your hands in the right place, keeping your eyes in the right place. So that part of it comes back a lot easier. You know, uh, the pass rush part of it, you need to get enough reps over and over and over again so your body reacts on the move and you're not thinking it through. Andre, um, I, from a, just kind of a broad question, this team has had good offenses recently and expects to have a good offense again. When you have a good offense, like how does that impact your, what you do on defense? Oh, it's great because you spend a lot of time on the sideline. <laughs> you know, if they, if they could control the ball, you know, uh, and keep us on the on the sideline, that's a great thing. And um, and obviously, when you're playing from ahead and you got a double digit lead. And you know they got to throw the ball. That's even better because now the guys are able to pin their ears back and let it go. You know, so the years that I've been here where we've had high sack totals and we've had big sack games, the combination was we had a big lead. You know, early in the game, they had to throw the ball over and over and over again, and the guys knew that it was pass rush time. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing. They keep, they keep us fresh, and then they allow us the ability to get after the quarterback. What have you liked the most from DJ Wanham, seeing him from like the beginning of training camp in July to now, and kind of the strides that he's made at that other defensive end spot? Uh, I think he just gets better and better every day. You know, he is, he's hungry. He wants to be really good. You know, I think the biggest thing with DJ is DJ's a playmaker. You know what I mean? It, and all three uh, preseason games, he made plays in the run game. You know, uh, uh, Griff pressured the quarterback and pushed the sack to DJ uh, in the game last week. You know, but DJ makes plays uh, that are extended towards the sideline, you know, like D did when he was young. You know, he makes, he lines up in a six technique, head up on the tight end. They run the ball away. He has the ability to get off a block and still go make a play. So I think that's the element that he gives us is another playmaker on the field. With Steven being able to play inside, I think we saw a little bit of that you know, prolonged in Kansas City last week. Does that give you more flexibility if you wanted to you know, place DJ opposite Daniil to start where you can use Steven in more situational stuff? Oh, no question. And, you know, the, the great part about it is you've got Steven, DJ, and Griff that can all rush inside and outside. OK, so that allows me to be the mad scientist that week. You know what I mean? I'm able to say, OK, I want 
this offensive lineman has a problem with this style of rusher. Okay, so I can put this guy on that guy, put this guy on that guy, and put this guy on that guy. So it doesn't matter where they line up, you know, and so it makes it more difficult for the offense because they're not saying, okay, you know, 99 is going to be here, 97 is going to be here, 90 is going to be here, and 98 or 91 is going to be here. They're all over the place. And so that's the part that really helps you and makes it more difficult on the offense. Is this the most versatility you've had for your defensive line then? Uh, no, we were pretty versatile, you know, back when we had, you know, B-Rob and Griff and D and Tom Johnson. You know, we could move guys around quite a bit. And then Steven was a young guy with that crew, too. You know, so, uh, you know, B-Rob rushed inside, he rushed outside. Griff rushed inside, he rushed outside. Same thing with Steven. So the only guy that, that stayed consistent as an inside rusher was Tom Johnson at that time. And I think that's the year we ended up with like 56 sacks or something like that. When you talk about DJ Wanham, it seems like even from the draft, you had a sense for his mentality and, and uh, how he could learn. Just, I guess, how have you seen that play out over these last two years? Like, how does his mentality impact what he's been able to do in terms of growth? Um, I mean, I think the reason why his growth has happened so fast is just because, you know, uh, he's hungry and it's important to him. And... Um, you know, he takes good notes. He has good questions. He comes out early and works on his craft. Um, it's important to him to be good. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when you, when you bring a guy in from college and he's been great for a long time, he thinks he's great. You know, and, and my job is to humble him for him to figure out that he's not great at this level. You know, and so when you get a guy to walk in the door and he's already has that mentality, it helps you uh, because... 99% of the time, you have to humble the rookies because they've been all American. They've been great in high school, great in college. So this is the first time in their lives that somebody has slapped them down to reality and say, you don't know what you think you know, and you got to study more, and everything that you walked in the door thinking you, you knew is wrong. And usually, I tell them that from the beginning, but usually they have to come out here and see that it's not going to work because when they get out there and the bullets fly for real, they're going to go back to what they're comfortable with, right? And then they go out there and they're not having the success that they had before. And then that usually humbles them. And now they're begging me to coach them. You know, they're begging me, hey, what are you seeing? What am I doing wrong? So uh, it, that transition is always that way. The DJ's been different, you know, just like Daniil was different. They didn't come in the door that way. They came in saying, coach me. I'm an open canvas. Just coach me. And so I think, I think that's the thing that's helped him a lot. All right, guys, have a great afternoon.